Look at this. Start it up. Is that a red background or is my eyesight weird? Maybe my eyesight's weird. Maybe it's the monitor. What is up, everybody? Welcome into the DMBA show. Let's go. I hate having to do that. Let's go. Oh, man, I know you hate having to do that. Worse is you're like on a slight delay out there in, in Philly. And so we're going to have, mm -hmm. I can just tell already, we're going to have weird pauses in between every sentence. I don't want to say anything. I don't I want you to pause. I'm just gonna sit here. <laughs> I am, dude. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna give the most pregnant pauses ever, dude. I'm gonna uh, ask questions and answer them myself before you even get an opportunity. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, perfect. That's gonna make for a really great show. Uh, Philly man, that's him over there. <laughs> D line go out there in Philly for the 100th day. That's right. Please stop saying Philly. Please. I'm. I'm Denver man. I'm D line. I'm. I'm, well, I'm ready to come well. back. Guess what? You want to hear something crazy? Guess yeah. what I'm going to do tomorrow. Guess what I'm going to do? Come back home. I'm going to come back home. Let's go. <laughs> Alyssa, can you find that song? I'm coming home. I'm coming home. <laughs> Just play it really dramatically under Eric here. He is coming back tomorrow, guys. We might even do a show together. Who knows? Uh, we'll find out together. Um, we are going to talk about this new rest rule in the NBA. The NBA, I don't know if you heard about this, Eric. The NBA has come down hard on teams for resting their stars. They're no longer going to stand for it. Good. They are, they're really cracking the whip here saying, uh, we have some real hard rules in place. We'll talk about whether they'll be effective at all. Giannis just loves, he loves nothing more than telling the people of Milwaukee he wants to leave. He, he's dropped so <laughs> many hints. Dude, I mean, this he, is what, this is my strategy around the office. I just threaten <laughs> to so quit true. all the time. It's so true. <laughs> Giannis, Eric, definitely making threats. If our values no longer align, if you're not trying to win, then I'm going to go to Philly. Uh, and then <laughs> we're also going to snake draft today. We are going to snake draft city specific Snakes. foods. No, oh. regional foods. You're out there in Philly, home of the cheesesteak. Dude, we're gonna one day, one day, we're gonna do my goddamn dream. The, when we finally do the snake draft of snakes, that's when we know we finally hit it. You guys don't. I'm telling you, you guys don't know how to do animals, though. We've learned this about you guys. Don't like like. There's two. There's subs. You know, categories, subspecies. Sure. Uh, okay. Like if you're gonna say okay. rattlesnake, you're really gonna take 46 yeah. snakes with one pick. That doesn't count. No, dude. I would say the western rattlesnake. That's <laughs> the top snake. <laughs> no, actually, guy. you know what? You know what? Top snake. Top snake. Cobra. Top snake. Really? That's a good snake. King Cobra. That's a good steak. That's a good, that's a pretty good Number snake. A one pick. King I think Cobra. Cuff Adder most dangerous. Kind of ugly though. <laughs> um, but first, Eric, I thought just to get us loose here on a Thursday. Sure. I was sitting here thinking of this on my drive in. Last week we snake drafted um days of the year. And one of yeah. my top picks was the first Sunday, first football Sunday of the year. And can I tell you something? I was right. Yeah. That was a great day, man, when it came through. But now we've got baseball getting ready to go into the postseason. We've got college football in full swing, NFL. All we're waiting on is NBA and NHL now. So oh, I yeah. thought we would. I would thought I would get Philly man's perspective. I'm going to keep saying it because I know how much it bothers him. <laughs> it, just, it just eats his soul. We're going to get Philly man's take on the best months of the year for sports. Mm. The best months. Well, I mean, there's how, a definitive you know. right answer, but, but that's is fine. there? Whatever. What is yes! this? October. What? Okay, <laughs> that's what I had first. So I guess there is a definitive one. Everyone knows that all the sports are either started or are in their most meaningful place. Uh, it's the absolute be the the weather is still beautiful. You oh, can still enjoy the, the outside, dude. It's it, October is the prime fillet cut of sports. Everybody knows this. It's a hundred percent true. You've got the World Series, or you got the playoffs. World Series now all the way back into November, but you got baseball playoffs which is the most watchable by far portion of the season for baseball. You've got the NFL, which is the only thing I will say, and this is my cynical Broncos fan take of the last seven years. October, season's kind of over. <laughs> 
bro, that's the saddest. That's the saddest thing ever uttered, uttered on this channel. And like that's from coming from the Nuggets. The Nuggets that's are in a so place true. now where we can look down on the Broncos. I, we've become oh, so so smug. far, dude. Our smug has begun become so smuggity that like we're looking down on the like every. No one's safe. No one is safe at this point. Let me let me ask you. Going into a Sunday, first football Sunday or last October Sunday, which one do you expect to have more excitement for the Broncos? You personally. Bro, that's not fair. I mean, it's just not fair. <laughs> it's not fair, man. All right. That, you know what? Get this negative energy out of here. We're going to stick with the Broncos. are going to bounce back, baby. Let's do this. Uh, Let's NBA, go. NBA and NHL have started. It's always exciting in the fir first part of the season, especially for us. And then even college basketball. You know, college basketball is there. You get everything, man. You really do. It, it's October. It is just, it's the poo-poo platter of delicious sports, man. Everything is there for you, and it just gets you into – what it does is it's the nice – uh, transition into the real part of the year, the real sports portion of the year. So you get out of the you get out of the baseball desert, uh, the summer desert, which is I mean, obviously we've got there are new sports arising. There's the MLS, there's the MLB, the WNBA. There are things that are interesting, but like once you get into the long winter where. Uh, yeah. sports are the only thing that keep people alive or sane and so like the heavy hitters <laughs> come into play like yeah. that's what you want like october it kicks it off october reminds you that it's okay it's okay to spend an entire day sitting on a couch eating chips and no one will judge you yeah and then also like football late in the year is kind of freezing cold you know you go like it's yeah. still, you still go you bundle up and it's a great time but it is nice October. You're just in like the flannel, maybe the hoodie. It's still, you know, it's fun to be outdoors for sporting yeah, events dude, at that point. When it's too when it's too cold to be outside or wear, I don't know, tank tops uh in January <laughs> when when basketball the basketball on, season yeah, is go. in its full yeah. swing. Unbelievable. Uh, Eric has four takes. He just he finds new ways to bring them up. Uh, <laughs> it's a good take. It's, it's a, a good goddamn take. It's a good take. take. <laughs> it's a good take. Um all right, second best month of the year. October, we all agreed. I didn't know is that consensus consensus. Of course. Uh, the second best month of the year, um, uh, November. <laughs> really? It's all right. The same thing. Dude, it's I don't I mean, reasons? Like, it's just, I don't know. I mean, it, we're going. Baseball is barely there. You got the World Series. All things fall. Just fall and sports <laughs> are the most comfortable, uh, like, pleasant marriage that exists. That is the perfect time where, again, you. Go outside, go inside. It makes sense. It's crisp. It's hoodie season. You wear layers. Yeah. Uh, it's every, it's everything you want. What, what, what do you think? Well, look. At, do you see me? By the way, first day of the oh, year, long sleeve shirt. Rolled the sleeves up, but still layers. First day layers. Of the year. First day of the year to go layered, man. It was a little cold this it. morning. Um, I went with March. You got March Madness. Oh, the Madness. NHL sure. The and NBA is in their final. You know, the home stretch, opening day. You know, right around. So there's, I think March Madness is an all timer. I think, yeah. So that to me, uh, I put them. I think second. you're right. I think you're right. That actually makes a lot of sense. And March, it, like, these are the two months that are kind of bookending again the cold, dark winter that has consumed yeah. us all. Like, we're getting you're out right, of it. Actually, this is such a good take. <laughs> October and March are the same month. Just you know, on opposite ends. They, they are. The, it's the yin and yang. It's the yeah. bookend of the winter bookend. Yeah, bookend. Yeah. That's so true. Uh, after that, I went with April. You've got continued March Madness. You got the Final Four. The <laughs> NBA playoffs begin. The NHL playoffs begin. And I'm not a golf guy, Eric, other than a great golf play. I've told you I'm a great golfer sure, myself. Sure, but sure, sure. You don't you don't watch. enjoy watching it. You just yeah. enjoy but dominating the Masters, it. The Masters is there a tradition unlike any other? I'm told. <laughs> Huh. Is it one that you've ever partaken in? What was the what's the most uh, masters um, tradition that you've yourself oh, in, in Tagger in '98? Man, I just remember that hit he yeah. had on, on 14. Oh. Unbelievable. Say say no more. Say, say no, no more. more. And literally, literally nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got October, March, April, and then this is my list personally. I go June here because you got the oh. NBA and NHL finals. Baseball is, okay. is around. Ooh. And okay. then you also have the NBA and NHL draft, which is, you know, I mean, the draft is a big time for the NBA. So the NBA kind of peaks in in June. That's okay. what, I'm I a big get, NBA guy. I can get down with that. I'm trying to picture myself last June. I think I was pretty happy. I was enjoying <laughs> right. myself, as I, re as I recall. I've, I, I remember yeah. 
I remember I remember that being like a positive sports month that I found to be enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, like I guess you have to take every month that contains a championship into consideration, right? That's when sports are at their zenith and uh, emotion has fully taken over. Yeah, I, I I will say you were very happy in June, so happy that I think you had a, a hangover in July. <laughs> Absolutely nothing has changed. I walk around. I I will carry that hangover with me for the rest of my days. Do you know that media days in three weeks? I mean, less than three <laughs> weeks, man. Basketball's back, Eric. Get to work on the shirts, buddy. Um, all right. So we got June, and then I go to September. So we, you're right, man. We're just working our way through <laughs> fall and spring in each direction. I didn't realize this till you brought it up, but it is true. <laughs> September is NFL season, college football season, and then Major League Baseball. Um, and then it's also the top weather. I mean, that first Broncos game was like a shorts and a t-shirt situation, bro. It was you. It, it's funny because around the first time every year, around the first football game, I'm like, man, football. Like, it's like nice to sit outside as a football game. Like, I'm so happy this is an outdoor sport. And then, like, fast forward to two months later when it is literally uh, negative degrees in the stadium, yeah. and you're like, why is this an outdoor sport? What am I doing with my life? Yes, the first games of every season for the football in Denver, Colorado are an absolute gift from God, yeah. except for I the think- score and the Broncos. <laughs> then I went to February. You've got the Super Bowl. You've got the sure. NBA all-star game, NBA and NHL <laughs> oh, both going on. You have the that's NHL a negative. all-star game. Yeah. Negative. Um, well, that's a, that's a net neutral. You've got college basketball, kind of the end of the uh, conference schedule before this conference tourneys. Um, you just got a lot of stuff going on. February is good. It's just so cold though. <sighs> Super Bowl love brings it up a lot, man. It brings it up an awful lot. I haven't really thought about this, but this is a good exercise to realize that uh, we are all ruled almost entirely by sports. Our entire This yep. is the same way that, like, uh, you know, early peoples would be controlled by the sun, the patterns of the sun, and <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the, yeah. the, migration, the migration of the mighty elk following the bugle. Yeah. And we Oh, you know I love are, that. <laughs> all we do is we just wait for things to happen that are sports-related, and then they define – our entire uh, lives during that period, which I'm completely down with. Did, were you here? You didn't watch, did you, when I gave my updated calendar? I, apparently not. I missed, must yeah, have missed it. I'll have to run through it because everybody listening to Please. the show has already heard Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I, I don't think there are four seasons. I think there are six. There are six, six seasons. seasons. Yeah, there are six okay. seasons. There is January 3rd until uh, St. Pat- <laughs> till, till Patrick's Day. That's okay. bad winter. It's just cold and it's terrible. Yeah. You yeah. have St. Patty's Day to Memorial Day, which is spring. You have okay. Memorial Day to 4th of July, which is good summer. It's not too hot. Okay. It's not too annoying. Everybody's in town. There's cool sports. Okay. Then you have okay. 4th of July to Labor dog Day. Dog days. That's, dog that's days. Bad, bad summer. It's just hot. Da- it sucks. The that's dog good, days. Bad. Then you have fall from Labor Day to uh, October 31st to Halloween. That's fall. And then you have November 1st through January 2nd, which is good winter. It's pretty good, listen, right? Man. Uh, listen, man. I mean, I don't hate it. I, don't, I absolutely don't <laughs> hate it. It's not like uh, I would say that the beginning of summer has absolutely nothing to do with the end of summer. So it's nice to <laughs> it's, it's nice to micro categorize. I'm in. I am, I'm, when people I'm say they in. love winter, they mean Christmas and, you know, like December. They don't mean February. They hate that part of it. So I think it's two seasons. It's like different. Well, unless they're skiers and snowboarders. Yeah, that's what Kale said. You and Kale, same person. I've always said it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) January comes up next. You have the the all the bowl games, the the NCAA championship games. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. NFL playoffs, NBA, NHL. Nuggets are always good in January. This helps. Hell yeah! (laughs) Let's go. College basketball also there. January, I feel like January should have been higher. It's actually, now that I list these off, they're all great. Um, (laughs) Then I've got December, NFL, NBA, NHL, full swing. November, same thing, but earlier. May, not really that great. NBA and NHL going well, nothing else. August, terrible. Nobody likes August. It's horrible. It's just baseball. Do we factor it in May? Do we factor in that my birthday is in May? Is that part of the... Oh, in that case, August definitely ahead of May. And now you know what? I'll put July oh, ahead of May of as a, well. You son of a biscuit! <laughs> that is, uh, in all sincerity, though, this is the beginning of the great run of sports, man. Like we're just we're in the yes, thick of it. we're back, dude. Dude, we're, we're so uh, back. nothing. I mean, obviously, being part of a sports network, you're very, you know, aware of the seasonality of sports and how it affects people's behaviors and what they do. And then when you own a bar. 
wow, there is very clearly different sports seasons that people like really want to dig in. Like we, you know, the great desert of the, of the summer comes upon the DNVR bar. And then like magic, it's like uh, one of those um, planet earths, like, like one day in the desert, the, the rain comes and then all of the animals return. And that's exactly that's what right. happens. All of, all of our animals return to the bar and we feed them and uh, hang out with them and become one with them. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the way that the world works and it's a beautiful thing. It's raining right now in the Delta. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Manna from heaven. <laughs> These uh, Broncos Absolutely. really. <laughs> oh, why are you going to keep bringing down the vibes, I just, dude? I, I cool. don't know. I'm trying to up the vibes, man. I'm trying to bring it up. You know who brought up my vibes this week? Fubo TV. Why? Really? Because, yeah, re-upped my subscription with Fubo. Let's re-upped go, right just go. in time for football season. 140 plus live channels of sports, shows, movies, and news. You know how we're branding this. It is the... It's not cable. It's the like uh, television provider that is for sports fans. You like sports. Yeah. You want all the sport. You know how it is that you don't get altitude if you get sport. You know this or that or whatever. Dude, They've got you covered with everything. Did you want to yeah. chime in? Yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't really leave me much of a space, but uh, I'll say this. <laughs> I I agree. Off you go. <laughs> oh, thank, you, thank you for that. That was, that was a great addition to my ad read. Uh, there's no contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. Thousands of hours of cloud DVR. Another thing that you need when you're are you know when you're picking your provider you want to be able to dvr nobody watches tv live anymore you want to, be able to stream it this or that let me let me tell you this let me tell you this as a man who's been marooned behind enemy lines here in philadelphia with not a single thing that feels like home the one thing that i have is my cloud dvr on fubu that has or fubo excuse me that has all of my games that i have told it to record to record so i could wake up in the morning and watch the usb dismantled by germany yeah. and it was it, i could <laughs> all of these things but i mean truthfully like there's something like that when you like get home you know you're like oh my shows whatever it's like i'm literally watching fubo on my phone in, in the evenings it's, it's amazing yeah there you go so spine up fubo uh tv we've also got a new one i'm not uh, you know this is kind of new to me here uh neutrafol do you have this one? Oh yeah oh yeah Maybe maybe you could help me out with this you, one, Eric. You, you son of a bitch. I know where I, this is going, but it's true. Listen, Nutrafol is uh, designed. It is uh, a sort of organic, sort of a um, non-harsh medication way to treat male pattern baldness and thinning hair, moreover. Um, it is a program whereby they send you out uh, pills that you take for a day. You take them in the morning. You take them with food. And I will tell you, like, I've been taking it. Uh, I'm too early on to see any hair revival. But honestly, the craziest thing, in the same way that I felt like my body changing when I started taking um, AG1 and I saw my nails starting to improve and my yeah. head getting more shiny, my hair has become lustrous, more luxurious. Like it lays better. I mean, I have my hat on now, but uh, I'll show you when I get home. But like, truthfully, can't, like, I can't it, wait. My, like, I'm not even kidding. Like, my hair felt like it had been conditioned like every day without it yeah. having been conditioned. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a wow. new way to, 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 to it, it really is pretty remarkable like i i i have felt a very real difference so neutrophil is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth visible thickness and physical scalp coverage uh and here's what you want to do take the first step to visibly thicker healthier hair for a limited time neutrophil is offering the listeners of this very show ten dollars off your first month first month subscription and free shipping when you go to neutrophil.com slash men and enter the promo code dnvr that's n-u-t-r-a-f-o-l dot com slash men and of course it's promo code dnvr find out why over four thousand healthcare professionals recommend neutrophil for healthier hair use that promo code dnvr all right back here let's talk about our main topic here today or one of our two main topics really and that is you know that nba rest rule news came out over the weekend like on sunday or something like that and it was the nba is considering and I always love this, by the way, when when Woj reports something as the NBA is considering a new rule, and it's like, oh, they're voting the on it on yeah. Wednesday. It's the NBA done. is zeroing in on uh, yeah, right, yeah. Like, yeah. the way that they <laughs> talk about the, the draft. It's so I true. You, you got to tell me the details. I actually don't know the details of this. Like, well, I'm going to tell you and, and and everybody else because it's actually pretty interesting. So, first of all, the NBA very clearly knows they have a problem. The season's really long. 
And by the way, that's I've always said this is part of it. When people are like, yeah, but it's not healthy for these players. I'm like, a marathon's not healthy for runners. It's actually horrible. That's the the thing is you're pushing your body to the limits. To play 82 games, the endurance is part of the point. And so I hate War this of attrition, idea. baby. War of attrition is just part of it. So I hate this idea of like the athletes are being wrong for this. It's just, that's what you sign up for. And also, by the way, it's how we make tons of money. Um, but here's, so they have a problem because teams have gotten smart and the smart is it's smarter not to play than it is to play because then you're healthy for the playoffs and it sucks. The incentives are inverted. So how do we fix this by making up a very convoluted set of rules by which a team can now be punished for resting their players. And let's be real here, Eric. There's always when rules like this pop up, there's always somebody or some buddies that the rule was designed for, right? Oh, yeah. They're not – as much as when Jokic missed that one game in Milwaukee when they had a back-to-back right. New Orleans, he became, Milwaukee. He became and the, fa- the face the of face, the, <laughs> the face of <laughs> resting somehow. I don't think Adam Silver looked at that one game and was like, we got to stop Jokic from missing two games a year. We got to stop it. <laughs> He was looking at the Los Angeles Clippers. I mean, let's be yep. honest. They're the ones that openly are just like, yeah, we don't play our guys. That, you know, sue us. And now the NBA is. And it's also the Golden State Warriors. You know, yeah. you're looking at a team like the Warriors who also just kept their guys out. I mean, they've had some injuries and they're a little bit older. Uh, you can even look at New Orleans. New Orleans last year had Zion, who the team kept being like, uh, we don't know what's going on with him. And more importantly, they had Brandon Ingram. People don't know this story outside of New Orleans, but my good buddy Christian Clark is following him, so I follow this a little bit closer. The team was calling out Brandon Ingram 20 games into the season, being like, yeah, he's uh, he's got to decide when he's ready because he's ready, and he just wouldn't play. for you know He wasn't 100% or this or that, but all of his teammates were like, hey, man, we're not either. You need to get out on the score. Yeah. So I think... Yep. There's multiple teams that have done this, but let's be honest. Let's call it the Clippers rule. Don't you think? Yeah, dude. Yes. Let's have, let's just call it the Kawhi Leonard rule. Let's just <laughs> cut to the absolute chase. So no, here's the rule. No more than one star player is unavailable for the same game for rest. Okay? No more okay. than one star. Now, naturally, you must be asking yourself, Eric, what is a star? What, consti- what constitutes a star? Well, I'm glad you asked because a star... <laughs> is any player that has made an all-star game in the previous three seasons. Okay. So Along Jamal with is a handful resting. of other qualifiers, a handful of other qualifiers that work. Now, yes, the very important thing here is Denver, mid-market energy, you know, little brother energy. How come we never get the all-stars? Saved by this rule. Denver only has one <laughs> all-star. Denver literally cannot break the rules. Of this, uh, uh, at least that I, one specific is, part of it. Which is awesome, except for that just hurts us. Now we don't get to watch Jamal Murray if they're uh, taking advantage of this role. But uh, <laughs> that's I, I, true. Go ahead. That is go true. Ahead. Um, <laughs> so I think that part of it is funny because then you look at it and you go, okay, Wembenyama. We were at Summer League, right? You remember going to Summer League? It was sold out. Vaguely. We couldn't even get tickets to game number one because Wembenyama was there. You might say he had star power selling out the biggest sellout in Summer League. Not a star. By this metric, Jamal Murray, not a star. Lots of guys, not a star. Uh, Mike Conley, star. Well, I mean, they just need to use the uh, Supreme Court's definition of pornography when it comes to NBA stars. <laughs> yeah. You know it when you see it. You know a star when you see a star. This still wouldn't help like Jamal Murray, very controversial about whether or not he's a star. So there's still players that, <laughs> that are, Wait, are we talking about? Limo. We're talking about Ed. Not pornography, right? We're talking about the NBA. Yeah, we're doing <laughs> I'm just curious. I want to make sure I know what we're talking about. I need to that understand. might be your single best joke in the history of the show. Oh, my God. It's going to take me a second to rebound from that one. Oh, my uh, listen, God. man. I understand the 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 design. I'm glad, man. I got to say, I'm very glad the NBA is taking this personally and wants to make sure that, in fact, the they are a product for entertainment and they want to make sure that they are presenting an entertaining product every single night. <laughs> wow. Uh, all right, moving right along with the NBA rule here, also known as the pornography rule, apparently. Um, 
<laughs> Teams must ensure that star players are available for national TV and in-season tournament games. I love this. In-season tournament. And so here's the thing. If you have a back-to-back, -back, okay, and let's say your back-to-back -back is, you know, let's just use the Nuggets here, even though they don't have any stars, so it's a, you know, it doesn't work. But the Nuggets had a home game against the Charlotte Hornets, and then on the very next night they had a road game that was an in-season tournament game. They would be right. penalized if they were chose to rest their players on the second night. You need to make sure your players are available for the in-season tournament, regardless of any other circumstances. I like that. I like that. They're, they're doing everything that they can uh, in their power to ensure that the success of these of the in-season tournament, if people are not playing, like it's, you know, I mean, how many, we just, we, we're seeing everybody fall all over themselves to trying to discredit the Nuggets run to the NBA championship. Like, oh, eight seed, blah, blah. If you, you know, if there's just things built into this in-season tournament that already has everything faced it against it. And you're like, well, Kawhi didn't play like this person right. didn't play like what what the hell does this thing mean so I actually right. appreciate that you're for this you're pro um, teams must maintain a balance between the number of one game absences for a star at home and on the road so this is a weird one they don't want Kawhi Leonard playing all his home games or actually you know what I'll just use a random player Joel Embiid they don't want players like <laughs> Joel Embiid always being available for his games in Philly but never available i'm just going to use another random city available in denver they don't want that yeah. so he's going to have to if he's missing games for rest they need to have a relatively equal balance of home and away i love those uh, random yeah. cities you chose and random players uh it really yeah. helps to illustrate the idea yeah. um That's why beautiful I random beautiful yeah. beautiful let's go um this is a good one. Teams must refrain from any long-term shutdown or near shutdown when a st player stops stops participating in games or plays in material re reduced role in circumstances affecting the integrity of the game. Let's call this the Bradley Beal rule. Do you remember last year with like 20 games to go, the Wizards shut down Bradley Beal for the year? They shut him down. Yeah. They shut him down. Damian Lillard, last 10 games of the year, they shut him down. This is yep. a, there's no more shutting a guy down. If you yeah. can play, you play, and it doesn't matter if the game has no merit. doesn't matter where it's at, if it's important or not. you got to play your guys. Man, all this stuff is so hilarious when you uh, – the, the world <laughs> of the NBA so and true. sports <laughs> exists. And, and, like, and then when you, like, graft any of this thinking onto, like, real life and everybody else's jobs, you're like, all right, so I don't get to just, like, not come to work. Right. Like I, I right, have to yeah. come to work uh, totally. every, and you hold up. You're saying every day, not yeah, yeah. like I don't get, you're not, we're not going to shut down kale and just send him home for 20 days at the end of the season. Like you actually have to do your job. You have to do the thing that you're making millions of dollars for that. People are all looking up to you and counting on you. And uh, you happen to be in this spotlight for what will in your life be a very finite amount of time, a very short amount of time. And for some reason, it's like a struggle. I mean, I like I. It's, it's obviously uh, the position of sitting on a couch and watching is different than the actually going through very strenuous ac athletic activity. Um, but come on, man! Like these are world class athletes. Like uh, you know, like a shouldn't a world class athlete want to display their world class athlete? Uh, prowess at all times. No, like, no, 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 no. Absolutely, they do not want that. <laughs> I know they don't, but like, why? Why? What has happened? I don't understand. I'm telling you man. this. I'm going to get to it, the big picture in a second, but I want to more. There's a lot of layers to this. I want to get through them. Teams must ensure that healthy players resting for a game are present and visible to fans. Another Kawhi rule. Kawhi would do the thing where it's like, I'm resting and he's not even in the state. He's just like somewhere completely else resting. Uh, I think Draymond Green had one of these last year. He wanted to go to LeBron's. I can't remember what LeBron had. Oh, he is. The game where he broke the scoring record, Draymond Green requested from the Warriors that he missed their game so he could go to LA to watch the Lakers play. And absolutely, again, you're talking about things that would, if you mentioned this in 1990, people would be like, what? <laughs> no. Yeah. But, uh, but actually, yeah, so this is that rule. You'll be there. This is a great point by Philly Urbanite. Philly Urbanite, my brother, my, my deep connected yeah. brother, me and you, Philly Urbanite. Uh, NBA is making it too complicated. Just don't pay them when they don't play. We'll get I to actually, that. We'll get to that in a second. So I want to get to that. So lots of exceptions, obviously, to this rule, including, you know, there has to be a LeBron exception to every rule the NBA comes. Like LeBron really writes the rules more or less, and then Adam Silver signs off on whether these work. They do have a rule that fits like four players in the NBA. LeBron's one of them. That is, 
if you've played for X amount of years, I think it's like 14, 15, something like that. If you're above a certain age, if you've played a certain amount of minutes, these rules don't apply to you in same order. So this is basically the LeBron doesn't have to play in these and the older players. It's understood that they might actually they've, need to rest because they've literally been grandfathered in at this point. They're just the, <laughs> the, the, the grandfathers of the league are able to yeah. <laughs> take a little rest. Okay, so, fine, whatever. So let me so let me say first of all to the philosophical point of this. I do think all of these rules are it's like in computer coding, you're familiar, when you make a code sure. and then you have to be like, "Oh, it works." <laughs> it works, but Everyone we, look, I made a code. <laughs> yeah. You made a code, right? And then you have to make some new code that's like, "Well, except for in this circumstance, yeah. then it changes." Sure. Or that. Sure, and then you're like, sure, "Oh, sure. crap. That that new code really screwed up this other thing. So we have to make another code in there that if this I'll code tell you what and then that one and then... And I'll tell you know, what they've created. They've created yeah. an algorithm. This is an <laughs> algorithm that so, you go through. And so now the algorithm is so complex that no player, uh, team, or fan knows what the hell is going on. There's only just some guy back there that enforces these rules. It's like the IRS, really, where you're like, I think I filed my taxes. And they're like, no. $10,000 fine. You screwed something up. That's what the so NBA I, has created here. I Now I'm thinking about this even more. I kind of like that, too. I kind of <laughs> like that there's just like a, there's sort of like a loosely, there's like a loosely understood, very threatening aura to the NBA saying like, you have to play. You are here to entertain people. You have to play. And like, there are specifics. We'll find out like how you what infraction you have actually uh, earned, but like you have to play. There's some, there's you're, if you, you know when you're doing something wrong, we don't know exactly what it is yet. We'll figure out a way to penalize it, but like you have to play, play the game. Yeah. Like, what are we yeah. doing? Uh, so this is, this is why I'm actually in on the rules, even though they seem really ridiculously thought through. What was the David Stern line about the decision where he was like, I thought it was horribly produced illy conceived and bad eyes, something like that i think that's what this is but it might just work and here's why eric <laughs> <laughs> but it just might work here's why all of these rules that we could sit here and think of a million reasons number one mental health a player you know a player has a bum hamstring or something like that they do have this thing where it's like an independent doctor they can f force an independent doctor to investigate an injury there's also, in the verbiage of the rule, there is a, if there is a conflicting reports about why a player misses. And by the way, Michael Malone did this. I can't remember what it was last year when a player missed and somebody asked why. And he was like, uh, it's a elbow or a knee or something. Like he's kind of joking <laughs> about the fact that it's not a real injury. He's, and he was just doing this, but it's also happened in real life. I can't remember the exact specific and somebody did get fined for it where the player claimed one injury, the team claimed another one. And they're like, wait a second. You gotta get, you gotta get your story straight. You gotta get your story straight. You gotta get your story straight. But the NBA can also put an investigation into your team and say, like, for oh example, Kawhi Leonard has missed 20 games with this weird injury. We're going to look into it. Maybe he's not actually missing it or Kawhi Leonard is only missing te nationally televised games, but nothing else or whatever it is. We're going to look into it. So here's why I think it'll work. These rules are dumb. They seem like they are that complex code, the algorithm. Sure. is so complex sure. that everyone's kind of confused now. But the fine and the penalty for player and team are so strict that I think, and the Ducks all have to line up in a way that most teams just don't think about. They're like, well, whatever, we'll load manage him today or we'll make up a fake thing. I think now it's going to deter people because the steps you have to take to actually rest a player are now kind of complicated. It's kind of complicated. Yes, that's great. That's what I mean. Like there's a quagmire. Like you know you don't know what you can do, so you're like, well, I guess you just need to play. I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just you got to play. I I, apo I apologize for your mental health somehow. Uh which by the way, uh I'm a proponent of mental health and of course, you know, making sure that people's mental health is uh you know, considered and taken care of, but I have been in Last weekend, I, I sat in a dark room and watched Portlandia for like eight hours. And I was like, oh, man, that's so that much, is, that is I'm dark. like, someone should check in on my mental health. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> I, I don't know if any, I don't know if anybody's like making any uh, rules and regulations to check in on Dion's mental health. Anyway, uh, would you play the game? Also, guess what, Eric? Guess what, Eric? What? No days off for you. Get you. you <laughs> not going to get say, time off. You better get to work, man. Make but you know what else? You know, you know what else they say helps <laughs> mental health? Like, is a, the first thing they say will help mental health is uh, vigorous exercise. Really? So yeah. So gonna, NBA, gonna play, one, NBA right? player. Wow. I mean, please. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's let's up the contract. I mean, but, but uh, <laughs> come on, NBA players. Let's go. Yeah, I look, there's going to be some loopholes in this or that, but I honestly think teams are going to be just like, I don't know, it's kind of complicated. We have to make sure our lies are a little bit more, uh, you know, thought through. <laughs> and honestly, I just know I people think teams are these like, it's like uh, the CIA or something, you know, there's all these like, it's like so airtight it's really just a group of guys sitting around going Bunch like hey, let's load manage this guy today like all right bro this now it's we like were just oh my god we were just talking about this the i'm sure this is a hot topic on this show uh the uh mummified 1000 year old alien that came out of uh, oh the, the hoax the, yeah yeah the, the mexican government i was like okay you're telling me that 1000 years ago a cover-up started multiple governments ago and they were able yeah. to keep it airtight until now yeah yeah, I believe it looked pretty. I mean, I was I'm all in too. That's a, that was a good <laughs> finisher. Anyway, these new rules are interesting. I hope they work. And it's all this NBA's weird way of like trying to fix the giant mess that they have allowed. It never would have happened under <laughs> David Stern. David Stern would have just fined Kawhi Leonard for like for no reason. They would have gone to court. Like, David Stern would have personally litigated it and won. Somehow sued Kawhi twice over, and everybody else would have been too scared to do anything. Instead, yeah. we have all of these weird things, and you know all this. And stuff. then, yeah, and then force them to wear tuxedos getting off the bus like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. all the while. Like, <laughs> it's so true, <laughs> sir and ma'am. Not like every every courtside interview has to be yes, sir, yes, ma'am. That's. That's right. Oh I'm just a hardworking American. Um, guys, Breckenridge Brewery, you guys know it's just oh. about time. It's not quite cool uh, enough, man, to crack open my Avalanche Chamber. When I do, it'll be on this put very on, show. When you put on one layer, the first time yeah. you put on one layer, it's Avalanche Amber Ale time. Nah, it's not true. This is the fun slinger. Oh, this is a total on. fun slinger type outfit. <laughs> or maybe it's the Broncos con- Country Paley. Maybe you want to try that one out. You guys know about Breckenridge Brewery. They have been OGs with us. Since the very dawn of time. Not many people like you're out in Philly. One of the things that is cool is there's people that were in the chat. Some of the shows being like, I'm a day one because it was literally day one. Breckenridge Brewery, day one. They were a day Day one. one. They were a day day one. one. You guys know them. You can get them. We have eight beers on tap here at the DMVR bar. So if you haven't tried one and you're in town, come try them out. Avalanche Amber, Mile High City, uh, Broncos Country Pale Ale Fun Fun Slinger. We've got the hard seltzers here as well. Almost the Palisade Peach is probably still Palisade. This is a Palisade Peach season. That's what the, the shirt is right here. Dude, Palisade Peach. Like, we didn't – somehow that didn't come into our sports rankings, the best uh, sports months. Uh, November, Palisade, Palisade Peach, Peach season. season. Let's there go. You go. There you go. Also want to tell you guys about FOCO. No, it's not Fort Collins. Eric, FOCO Should is be. where – well, FOCO is, is also Fort Collins. But in this instance, FOCO is the leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise with a product line that includes apparel – those awesome, by the way, uh, Garrett Bowles and Kale Sorbo, both <laughs> rocking the Denver Broncos overalls, which are legitimately cool, legitimately <laughs> the awesome. Other, the, the other two trait, the other trait they both share is that if you run at both of them, they'll hug you. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good today, man. He's on fire. <laughs> Best officially licensed gear for all sports and fandoms. Baseball season is winding up. Maybe it's time to get a maybe there's a discount on some of that Rockies bobbleheads you've been wanting to get. We've obviously got some ab stuff. We got a new Joker one. I did see a new Joker Serbia yep, one in yep, Foco. Yep. So there's some cool stuff there. Uh, Foco always has our back for Colorado sports and they have yours too. get the best gear around by using the link in our description for all non pre-sale items. Use the promo code DNVR. You get 10% off. We're always saving Hell you yeah. money everywhere on earth. Hell it's yeah. unbelievable. Um, more news, more news to get oh to Eric. Giannis, smokes, dude. Attentacumpo, oh, boy. went on some podcast I've never seen or heard before. StreamYard kind of joint, you know, guys just remote doing this thing. It did not look like it was a particularly big podcast. Giannis wow. a real one, though. He's not like the Denver Nuggets or, you know, you know, maybe maybe PR is a little different out there. They, like, send guys on <laughs> to, you know, do local media. I don't know. I don't know how it works. But Giannis hops on. Maybe this is why they don't do it. It's because Giannis hops on and, once again, gives a soundbite that makes it sound like he has 
given a decent amount of thought to leaving Milwaukee. He's thought about it. Oh boy. Oh Let me give, boy. You want some quotes here? He said, Please. if everybody's on the same page and everybody's going for a championship, everybody's going to sacrifice away from their family like I do. As long as we play and we approach the game every single day the right way and we all sacrifice for a common goal, I can see myself being a Milwaukee Buck for the rest of my career. That sounds good. Then okay, he goes, okay, but, but, yep, but, 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 thing in the back and he points at the larry o'brien trophy then i am not it's more than the money it's more than the fame it's more than the lobsters very strange <laughs> entrance into this conversation. is he paid in lobsters <laughs> it's, i guess he's pays more that's more than the lobsters eric it's more than the wine it's more than the charter flights for me it's all about that and i want that i actually like this i like this i like uh when because to me, he's talking directly to Chris Middleton, who took <laughs> well, yeah. a very long portion of the season off last year. And his Giannis, father died. I want people to understand the full context of this. I'm just saying, man. Like, but you are right. You are some, right. There is something to the idea that you are doing absolutely everything you can. You are putting in. I, I feel like this uh, in my current position where I will. I'm like, I spent all night in a dark room watching Portlandia because I did. Uh, <laughs> I, and I'm like, listen, man, like if everybody's not putting in the effort that I'm putting in, like, well, first off, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not leaving, but I'll, I'll make them leave. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, he's going to Philly. I Did you want, hear that, Alyssa? He's threatening us. I want, going to Philly. I want, no, no, no. I want people to be as committed as I am. Like I, this is work. This is, Something you do for, again, like a not your entire life, a finite part, part of your life, particularly if you are Giannis Antetokounmpo, a, an absolute world-class athlete that is at his peak and wants, is already transitioned into legacy thinking. He wants to make sure that he is remembered for the great champion that he truly is. And he's like, man, listen. I got you guys a championship. That's the, that is the part about you draft one. That, like, that's all I ever owed you. Now it is, if we're going to go to that next place, like it's going to be a joint effort. And the only way it happens is if everybody else is in. And I, I'm with, I, I actually am I'm completely with that th line of thinking. Like that's how it should be. Like he, he's clearly seeing things so, in his midst that he does not approve of. Yeah, I am a hundred percent with you as well, because there are players, Damian Lillard in Portland, who were late to this, right? They were late to the idea of, hey, like, you got to meet me halfway on this, and now it's so late, and I don't know if it's going to work out for Dame. So I do think there is something to holding your organization's feet to the fire in some capacity to say, hey, you owe this to me, man. I'm giving you everything I got. Yes. But this is also the thing that I've got, a, I've got, I know somebody, I got, I know a couple, I know a couple. <laughs> On the rocks a little bit. You know, I don't think this is going sure. out. I think this is going too me, well. Me and vote. Yep, me and yeah, vote. Yeah, yeah, you and vote. No, I don't, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of those, like, it's setting the table for what's inevitable. It's the, like, I will leave unless. Sure. And then it's like, no, you it's, know, like, at this thing that's like, okay, well, you, you're just saying that now, so you're not the guy to blame on the way out. And I feel like, and, and he says, I'm a Milwaukee Buck, but more importantly, I'm a winner. If there is a yep. better situation for me to win the Larry O'Brien, I have to take that better situation. Now, again, divorcing that from the rest makes it a little misleading, but there is also this idea of better situation. I think it's if it's a good enough situation, then I'll stay. Better situation? What are we doing? The to Lakers me, will have a better means, situation every time. Well, to me, it just means, like, again, like he's just looking around. He's like, I don't know if these guys are serious like I'm serious. Like, uh, the way that they exited the playoffs last se season was inexcusably embarrassing. Like, they came in with so much fire, so much momentum. Everybody kind of just penciled them into the NBA Finals. And that the way they went out was just like, like, what the hell? Like, what the hell just happened? Um, and I, I mean, like, who's there hold, on, hold on a threats. second. Whose fault was that? Probably Giannis's. He got hurt. Well, he, he didn't hurt. get hurt, but also, like, he was only okay. I mean, they... But, but he, he was hurt. Before, he was hurt. I, but, but they also lost the first one. He wasn't hurt. I'm just saying, like, there... I know. Is, it, it wasn't just him. But I, I just I just like the idea that it's like, like, yo, listen, like, 
are we in this? Like, are we, like, I'm looking around, like, I don't see people upset about this. Like, I want to make sure that like, I, my time here means something. I have, I have done something. I have already given you a championship. I have fulfilled my promise to you. Now we're into the next level. Like who is coming with me? If you're, if, if it's you guys, which I want it to be, it sounds like by all accounts, like he want it. I mean, it sounds, he starts off every, Here, every here's sentence what it, hold like on this. Eric, hold, with, on, hold on. I got to interrupt you because here's the thing about the Milwaukee Bucks situation. If you just look at their situation, their salary cap, they went all in and they won a title because that's what you have to do a lot of times, especially when you're Milwaukee. Like you have to say, screw the distant future. We've got to get guys around our superstar who's an MVP, a two-time MVP player, and let's make this work. And now, yeah, they had the crazy Middleton situation. They've had some bad injury luck with Brooke Lopez. Like, they've had a bad run in their post-title years. But they look at their team. It's the same team that won the title more or less this year, and it will be the same, more or less the same team next year. I don't see a world in which they can be as good beyond that, just logically. How can you, those, their stars are aging out and they're getting out of their contracts. So how do you rebuild on the fly? It's almost impossible. So I, this is the part where it's a little bit weird for me. Will it be okay for Giannis in two years for me, if, in my opinion, for him to want to look around? It sucks because there's nothing, Milwaukee, it'll be the same with Denver. At some point, they will run out of assets and it'll be like, Yoke might still be like 31, 32. And it'll well, be like, man, this sucks. But I, I I'm not. I'm not hearing this as a front office uh, edict. Uh, as a, I, th- I think, think it's a threat to his ta- teammates. I think he's talking to his locker room. I think he's talking to the people that are in the foxhole with him. I think he saw from mm. people not as much commitment as he would have liked, and he's he's talking to them. Like, I, yeah, you're right about the way that c- the construction of the team. I mean that can't be helped but it's the people that are there like if we are if we're going to go into war together like i got to be sure that you are approaching it with the same mindset that i am and like clearly in my mind clearly like he he doesn't think that that was the case i i mean if they win a title this year and next year and then their salary cap just is like like they don't they have they don't have any players they have to retool and it's going to cost them another year Giannis, you think he belo- owes it to them to stay and give them the gap year or two? Or is it like, hey, man, won the titles. I'm out of here. You guys have to reset the table. He doesn't owe him anything. He doesn't owe him anything. He really doesn't. All right. Like, All right. He, That's a bummer. I, I just hate know, the setup. I mean, I just hate the setup. And I do I think, do I will say this. I think Jokic is a little different in this. And whether you agree with it or not, Dame was the loyalty guy. And he might have stayed too yep. long. Giannis was the loyalty guy, and now we're seeing that that obviously has uh, ends to it. I kind of feel like Jokic, knock on wood, man, because who really knows? But I kind of feel like Jokic wants to win, but also doesn't, not that bad. <laughs> not like so bad that I would no, go he, to a team that's stacked just to get another type. No, dude, Jokic wants to win, but like he mostly just wants to dance with his shirt off. That's what he mostly wants to do. <laughs> he, and as we learned this weekend, he can do that. Without even being on the team, just go to the party and it's like, hey, this is <laughs> it's great. <amazing>. It's incredible. <laughs> um, do you think, by the way, do you think Milwaukee has peaked? They're the fourth best odds on on DraftKings, who's our partner today, plus 850, fourth best odds. Have they peaked already? No. I Well, they potentially peaked, but they could. They're, they're, it could be a plateau where it's a very high plateau. I think that they are being looked, they're being really overlooked, uh, overlooked because of the way they went out in the playoffs last year. Like, I think that they were the number one seed. Like they, like yeah. they were the number one seed with a bullet. Like they yep. were clearly the best team in the East. They were, they and it close. was, yeah, then it was, but it was like jarring and shocking the way they yeah. went out. I think True. that they still have quite a bit, but I think that what he's saying is like, like, I think we're getting a little complacent here. Like, I think that we saw our record. We felt good about it. And again, like we missed large periods of the season for reasons, whatever we had, like maybe drew holiday, all these things. It's like, I think that they still have they're They're like kind of still in their avalanche place. Like they won the title. They still have the core locked in. They have the pieces. They just have to get the motivation and they have to make sure that all of the pieces are working in tandem to, get them to that next level. I mean, otherwise they could very easily just be a first round, second round exit. They could peak if, if they're, so I, I get all of this from him. Man, I get it too. I do feel though, to me that it is a little bit of a, 
not a lie, a little bit of a, I think Giannis knows what his next move is. And I think this Good. is the like groundwork for, hey guys, I'm just putting it out there because in a year's time, I'm going to demand a trade. And I just want to be like, I, I've been saying this for two years, you know, if you don't <laughs> do this. It's like, he, right. doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't strike me as being that calculated, but what do I know about Giannis? I mean, he did take a photo the other I think Giannis is having a LeBron-esque summer. I mean, he did have a photo <laughs> just like two days ago that said something. It was like him in the gym and it was like quietly working on my game. He posted that to social media to his two million followers, quietly working on my game. So if he, if I don't he know, releases, like, if he releases Space Yam, I'll be <laughs> then I'll be like I'm, I'm out on Giannis. You're out on Giannis. All right, real quickly though, long he's long been ru- rumored to um, the Golden State, a place that has long been connected to to Giannis. Like, hey man, that's who Joe Lacob has his eye on. Giannis is maybe the successor to, to Steph. Maybe a little bit of overlap there, but they look at him and obviously, look, Giannis is in the East. Denver might face them in the finals sometime, but outside of that, it's not really a problem that the right. other two-time MVP in the NBA is is in a different conference. If he goes to Golden State, okay, things just got difficult. We know Joel Embiid might be on the move before too long. Now you got Giannis. Another place, the Lakers, always rumored to be in the market for a giant star. You know, he's made movies. He's done television. There's, It would make a lot of sense for them to say, hey, Giannis fits a long lineage of uh, he's the next Wilt. Um, and then Dallas, randomly enough, he's been rumored. We've always wanted or we've always talked about the Jokic Giannis, you know, two, two Europeans and like, let's put, put them together. Perfect fit. But Luka Giannis, that's just as good of a fit, man. And that would be a nightmare to come into our conference. I mean, why are we talking about this? I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you one more thing. He was asked uh, one word to describe Jason Kidd. Do you know what word he chose? Mm, jerk. Nope. Genius. <laughs> what? Genius. Unbelievable. Bald. So uh, <laughs> put that in your pipe and smoke it, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to put that in my pipe. Guys, I might have to to hide my crying from these terrible thoughts. I might have to throw on some shady rays. The sun was not out today, but that's not going to stop me from wearing my aviators. This Dude, you see how it aviators. is literally always sunny in Philadelphia. That's insane, man. Philadelphia is rocking their shady rays. Independent sunglass company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair you've ever worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. They got navigators. They've got oh, aviators. Okay. Oh, They've got bass fishing any, types. Any, any vessel that you want to pilot, we have the correct eyewear for you. They even have goggles for like skiing and stuff. They've got those on there where they have the color on the front, you know, like this or that. Wow. Uh, incredible wow. tin. I don't know anything about what you call these things. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use promo code DNVR and you get 50% off two pairs. Dude, 50% honestly, off. Honestly, an insane deal. Really insane deal. Try it for yourself. They're rated five stars by over 250,000 people. And if you break them or lose them, no questions asked. They send you a brand new pair to replace them. Can't go wrong. Uh, lastly, guys, want to tell you guys about DraftKings Sportsbook. The sportsbook we've made many a dollar betting on Nikola Jokic. What's your crazy? Oh, your bet this year is, is Michael Malone. Yes, my futures bet for this year is Michael Malone to win coach of the year. Always one year behind. This is as close to a lock as you can possibly have. I think my bet to this week is going to be the under on the uh the commanders broncos game <laughs> you see the, if i were to ask you uh who had more yards last week was it the car or was i'm sorry was it the commanders going up against the cardinals or was it the broncos oh my god <laughs> i don't want to talk about it. I, it was, i don't want to talk about the, the broncos dude. it was the broncos <laughs> the broncos somehow had more yards i learned that from our own todd davis by the way our broncos show absolutely elite todd davis is probably my favorite person on the planet at the moment i haven't seen Yogic for a while he'll probably regain that spot here in a little bit um right now do best for, new customers can bet five dollars on any football game and get two hundred dollars instantly in bonus bets that's right. It's instantly. You don't have to win. Remember when they used to be like, and if you win your bet, we'll give it to you. Everybody was so bad. They're like, you know what? We'll just give you your, uh, we'll give you that just no matter what. Just make the bet. We'll give it to you. <laughs> it's for any game in September. So you got a little time, but sign up now. Get in on all of the action. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net in New York. Call 8778-HOPE-NEW-YORK or text HOPE-NEW-YORK in Connecticut. 
Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsible. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 or old. Oh, man, this is a long disclosure. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football for terms for eligibility, terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Where'd Eric go? Did I lose him? Oh, you just, oh yeah, he had to sneeze. All right, Eric, it's time to go head to head. Well, hold, on, head. Hold, on. I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. Alyssa, are you able to bring up, we just tweeted something. There's a big deal. This I'm very oh, excited. Oh, hell yeah. This. We just bring dropped it this. We just I've been waiting on this, this one for like two months. We were approached by a very cool brand in Denver, Colorado. Be a good person. We are all fans of their uh, clothing anywhere. Harrison Wynn will wear it all the time. Uh, RK, Ryan yeah. Cummings for, will, will wear it all the time. Two not it's a good cool people. Brand. It's really weird, really ironic. It is, it's well, it's it, it's called overcompensation for the both. That's, of them. That is but, what it uh, is. Yeah. They approached us, and we decided to do a joint effort T-shirt. Uh, release with them. We're doing a Be a Good Person uh, DNVR collaborative t-shirt. You can pre-order it now. We're going to have a party at the bar. Date to be determined. It's going to be after a couple weeks um, later down the line, but uh, every you'll be able to wear your shirt to the bar, get discounts all night. It's going to be a huge be a good person DNVR blowout. Um, you'll be able to potentially buy shirts there. But if you want to be certain, like we're only creating the shirts that are pre-ordered. So if you want to be sure to get one, you have to pre-order it. Um, it's very cool, and I'm very happy about it. Two incredible Colorado brands collaborating out of mutual admiration and respect. What could what could be better? And then of course the shirt's a banger, man. So this is awesome, man. Be a uh, be a good person. DNVR collaboration. Great work, D line. Thanks, Tommy. Appreciate you. All right, now it's time to crush you. And this ah! today's <laughs> snake draft. Let's and you're go, out dude. there in Philadelphia. I was out I, there. I, I, a, I know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you are in Philadelphia. You've been there for a couple years now. You the the Philly cheesesteak really is the iconic thing. They have it two ways, as far as I could tell. What is with cheese whiz? Do people know a cheesesteak comes with cheese whiz as sort of a traditional uh, Philly thing? First off, it's called whiz. You get it with whiz. You get it. That sounds so much worse than cheese whiz. Like cheese whiz. Couldn't agree more. Cheese whiz is a Couldn't gross sounding word, but yet whiz somehow way worse. Yeah, they'll whiz on it for you if you want, but they will also put on a long hot. Long hot, hot. It, long hot is kind of like a shoshito pepper. It's kind of like yeah, a is. green it's chili. It's kind of like, it's just, I mean, it's just a pepper. It's good though. They call it a long hot. And like, there's a way you're supposed to go about it. You're supposed to get, so it matters uh, the bun, the bread that you get. You got to get a seeded, <laughs> you got to get a seeded, uh, <laughs> a, a seeded Philly with uh, long hots and Koopa Sharp. Whiz yeah. is for the, for the, for the goddamn tourists. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my guy Matt McChesney just walked in. He's uh, on the Buff Show today. Uh, you guys can't miss it. I'm telling you. Maybe my favorite sports personality in all of Denver. Oh, no. <laughs> Big time Nugs fan. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> he single handedly, people don't know this. He single handedly fought the entire Nebraska contingent in the stands <laughs> this last week. <laughs> he bought tickets in the set of a mountain of a man. You know, he's a little bit smaller than me, I'd say, but he's a big guy, you know, big, strong, intimidating guy. And he's, he scared off the entire Nebraska section. Anyway, that's coming up. Stay tuned. And he always brings the fire. All right. We're ranking. We're going to power rank city-specific foods. Alyssa was mm. kind enough to give you your first pick on this one. So I ah. want to hear city-specific. Now, this has to be like you identify this with the city. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I'm going to go with the goddamn bullet. The an A number one choice for city-specific foods. Alyssa, give me New York style pizza. Yeah, that's Let's a great go. First pick. That's, that's a great first, first pick. overall pick, dude. That's, that's the a great first LeBron pick. James. It is overall. the LeBron James. It is the LeBron James. Some people have that number one, but people who know have it number two. So it was a good pick, but not the best pick. New York style oh. pizza. Let, go with your pandering pick. Go ahead and pick green chili like a nope, goddamn. No, I'm not. Pick. Nope. I, you know me. I have integrity. I bet what I like. I'm going with buffalo wings. We're going okay. with buffalo right. wings. Fine, that's, listen. That's fine. the Michael Jordan fine. to your LeBron James pick. 
Fine. Whatever. That's fine. Uh, I don't care. Uh, oh, <laughs> we're doing snake. universally loved. Oh, yeah. It's All my right, turn fine. again. All right. Yeah. Um, this is where my I'm going to lose this draft so bad because I always I always bet with my heart here. Um, I'm going to go with Texas barbecue. I'm okay, going to go with listen. Texas barbecue. A lot of listen. people would say Kansas City, but not me. I'm going to go Texas. I love myself listen. a good brisket. Okay, fine. Listen, I'm going to go with Kansas City style barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you panderer. It's like the more popular one, but people don't really know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, like People don't dude. actually know what they like. Okay, cool. I will go then directly into, give me, Alyssa, if you please, the Philly cheesesteak. Oh, Lock it gross. in. Let's no way, go, man. Dude. It's, I wasn't even on my, that wasn't even on my board, to be honest give with you. Give me, give me Wiz. Give me Cooper Sharp. <laughs> give me Long Hot. Sure Wiz on there. Add Wiz. Say with Wiz <laughs> or Wiz. Just say Philly no. cheesesteak Wiz. No, no, no. No, no. That's uh, Cooper Sharp, please. <laughs> Cooper Sharp there. Uh, <laughs> You know what? I am now going to pander, although I'm going to half pander. People are going to be mad at this. I'm going to go with New Mexico green chili. God damn it. I, <laughs> I would that's I would I would pick it. Yeah. Just say green, uh, green chili. chili. I just mean, say green chili. It's just say green chili. It's too good. It's it's fantastic. I'm mean, honestly it's an underrated food. The coast hate us because everybody loves that food, but nobody talks about hate it. Hate us because they ain't us. Hate us because they ain't us. Yep. <laughs> all right all right go ahead. up again snake it up yeah it's all a right. snake trap here's, here's where i get a little weird it's personal oh this one I'm, I'm reaching it's too early oh, i could have no. saved it for later but i'm gonna go with cheese curds okay. one of my favorite Listen. foods okay <laughs> definitely Listen. a cheap and lowly food but it's it's freaking good man okay Whew. okay my most this shameless is... food i probably i eat i eat that like like every three weeks i'll have some cheese curds so I have the market cornered here. I can I have the, the next two picks that I can choose as I see fit. Okay, I will take Marissa. Uh, oh, Marissa, uh, Alyssa, if you wouldn't mind, give me the. Oh God, this is give me chicken and waffles. Give me uh, chicken. Where is that from? And yeah. Is that where, where is Los that region? That's either the that's either the South or Roscoe's. Yeah, Ross. I mean, I don't. I, I have seen it as lots of different like regional places, but I've seen it as like five cities claiming it. So it's a little well, weird, but I'll give it to you. The, the, Adam, the cheeseburger was originated in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so, dude, I saw a thing that had this cheeseburger in like San Francisco or something. I was like, what the hell? They're claiming this? Come on. Um, okay. All right. Oh boy. You got your all last right. pick and, here, man. Oh, this is a big one. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Let me take you through my thought process. I okay. am strongly considering the Chicago style deep dish pizza. You're gonna get I am pizzas. also I am also strongly considering the Italian beef, also from Chicago. <laughs> I am strongly considering <laughs> the pandering all city. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see what he's doing? He's I am pandering to all city. Right, bread, dude. Why don't you just take Joel Embiid? Just take Joel Embiid, man. You know I it. will t well, he's the rightful MVP. I will take <laughs> most valuable Philadelphian. Oh my god, dude. I will take this is such much such pressure. Give me the deep dish style pizza. Give me the <laughs> I love you multiple deep pizzas. Dish? Deep dish. The Chicago pizza. Wow. deep pizza. Wow. Uh, yeah, people are gonna recognize that, so they'll take it. I don't. I, I. We were talking about this earlier. You can only have one deep dish pizza a year. I. I feel like that's a food you can't do too often. Dude, it's just too much. Pequods in Chicago is the one of the best things I've ever eaten. It's delicious, but it makes you you regret it for at least three months. All right. I'm gonna go with this is a, another reach, but it's my board. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose it with dignity. I'm taking a crawfish boil. People don't Jesus. know how delicious a crawfish boil is. One of my absolute favorite foods. Cajun food is unbelievable. You put you put that much seasoning on some crawfish. You throw little mushrooms in there. You get those onions. You get the onions, dude. Your little gator drool. Unbelievable, dude. I all, I gotta, all I gotta say, all I gotta say, looking at this, like if I had a table that had your items it's on so them, good. My, my items on them, yeah. I would flip your table, dude. I my your table's <laughs> it's a my terrible table. Uh, my table's great. Crawfish boil. Most people haven't even had a. I will say this: the other thing about a crawfish boil, communal eating. That's like an event. You get together. You know, yeah, everybody great. throw the, everything in the thing together. Yeah. Then you eat it together on a table. It's a oh, mess. This, you just eat like a like an animal. <laughs> the thing I'm most upset about my lunch now is that you haven't also touched it. That's what I'm sad about. <laughs> Everybody, that was Philly Man, D-Line Co. Um, 
the last day he gets to be Philly man. Tomorrow he might actually be Denver man again. I don't know. We'll Jesus. see if we let him back in. He'll have to. The man, it's the man part that's in question. <laughs> that's definitely the man part that's in question. Everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. Hit that like button. Casual Fridays up tomorrow. Buff show coming right at you. You're not going to miss McChesney. He's running around the bar right now. He's so fired up to talk about CSU. Uh, oh it's coming God. to you right now. We'll see you guys what later. A nightmare. Bye.